Connecticut's number one local news. This is Channel 3 Eyewitness News. That's a probably fair question. It is. Well, you know what it is, Joe? I wouldn't call it babysitting. I would call it teaching life lessons. That's what I would call it. Because a lot of these kids have no idea about life's lessons. You know, I had 21 kids that had to do an opportunity workout this morning because they didn't go to class. Okay? So now you, you sit there and you try to tell them, well, guys, if you're going to miss class, how are you going to be able to perform on the test when you don't have the information from that class? What happens if you don't go to work someday and you don't call in? That's a probably fair question. It is. Well, you know what it is, Joe? I wouldn't call it babysitting. I would call it teaching life lessons. That's a probably fair question. It is. Well, you know what it is, Joe? I wouldn't call it babysitting. I would call it teaching life lessons. That's what I would call it. Because a lot of these kids have no idea about life's lessons. You know, I had 21 kids that had to do an opportunity workout this morning because they didn't go to class. Okay? So now you, you sit there and you try to tell them, well, guys, if you're going to miss class, how are you going to be able to perform? Randy Edsel's team, we said this at the top, first home game in 651 days. You're always constantly evaluating, uh, and as I told the team today in our team meeting, you know, we're always evaluating, and if you're not getting the job done, 
And if we feel that there's somebody that can go in and do the job, um, you know, better than. Hi, check, check, one, two, one, two. Thank you, thank you.
Say that? At him. Uh, Mike Jack Hogan, one, two, three, four, five. Thank you. Mic check, one, two, three. What's up, man? How are you? Yeah.
Connecticut's number one local news. This is Channel 3 Eyewitness News. And good evening, I'm Kevin Hogan. A very busy news day, topping late this afternoon by the announcement that UConn head football coach Randy Etzel has decided to step down at the end of the season. We're going to have much more on that in just a moment, but first, the rains are back with us, but how long are they going to last? Meteorologist Connor Lewis joins us now with the very for latest forecast. Connor. Thanks, Kevin. Yeah, it looks like Labor Day is going to be good to go, so a few showers could last into the morning, but that's about it. However, this evening, got some more rain on the way. In fact, a couple of downpours approaching or just to the east of I-91 at this hour, so just east of Hammond, you can see some of those deeper reflectivities, some reds and yellows, and we have seen some places get nearly a half inch of rain from today, so not just some light rain showers, but some moderate and a little bit of those downpours across Middlesex and New Haven County, and we'll see those showers going towards the east over the next hour or so, glass and very and in Bolton seeing some sprinkles and light rain showers while a lot of the state is getting at least some drizzle right now. 0.27 for Wallingford so far, Meriden 0.47, and we're seeing about a tenth of an inch for Wolka and East Hartford so far. Temperature's nice, but it is very muggy outside with that rain and those winds coming right off the ocean into Connecticut. We see some scattered showers across all of New England, not just Connecticut, and it looks like this is going to be the bulk of it, so over the next couple of hours we'll see kind of that defined line go a little bit towards the east and we could see some more of those showers and maybe some isolated downpours in eastern Connecticut. And then we're looking at very few showers while we're asleep tonight and maybe one more for the morning. But otherwise, we're off to mostly sunny skies once we get to the late morning, early afternoon, and we have more of those blue skies looking good throughout Labor Day. And those blue skies continue into Tuesday. Looking at our temperatures overnight, they'll mainly hang out in the 60s with that warm front still pushing in some of that warmer air. And then into the rest of Monday, temperatures are going to be at or around 80 degrees feeling really good outside with the blue skies. It's going to be a very nice Labor Day for us and also expect a nice breeze in the afternoon, which may be just right with some of those 80s that pop up. 67 degrees right now in Windsor Locks, 68 in Willimantic. Our dew points are a little bit on the high side, so if you're doing any sort of work outside today, you might have noticed that uh, you know sweating a little bit. It was uh, definitely muggy outside. Day ahead for tomorrow. We're going to have 70s in the late morning up to about 80 degrees inland and just a few showers very early, if anything. So we're looking very dry for Labor Day and right around the corner is some more rain in the forecast coming up of a closer look at Wednesday and how those showers and thunderstorms may unfold for us in the early morning forecast. All right. Thanks, Connor. Now back to that breaking news out of Yukon. Head football coach Randy Etzel announced late today that this will be his last season at the helm. It comes just one day after an embarrassing home loss to Holy Cross. Channel 3 Sports reporter Harry Chickman is joining us now with more. Harry. Well, that's right. Uh, it definitely has been an interesting 24 hours for the UConn Huskies. Randy Edsel, the all-time most winningest coach in UConn football history. But after 17 years with the program, his time with the Huskies is finally coming to an end. After losing to Holy Cross yesterday, a non-Division 1A program, Coach Edsel announced this afternoon that he will be retiring at the end of this season. Edsel, one of the highest paid state employees, as he is scheduled to earn $1.26 million dollars this year but after starting the year at 0 and 2 things have not gone as planned director of athletics dave benedict released a statement today saying quote yukon had an appearance in the fiesta bowl while the program has been unable to recapture that level of success on the field during randy's second stint as our head football coach the decision to retire at the end of the season was made by randy end quote coach edsel also spoke to the media today about football related topics. You're always constantly evaluating. Uh, and as I told the team today in our team meeting, you know, we're always evaluating. And if you're not getting the job done, and if we feel that there's somebody that can go in and do the job, um, you know, better than what you were doing, you know, we're going to make that change. I mean, that's, that's the way it is. And the Huskies will begin a national coaching search effective immediately. We'll have much more on Coach Edsel's decision coming up in sports. Thank you, Harry. Been a very violent 18 hours in our region just after midnight. Hartford police, they were called to Maple Avenue for a report of a man on a scooter being struck by a car. The unidentified man was located in a nearby parking lot, but later pronounced dead at the hospital. The suspect vehicle fled the scene after striking the scooter operator. The vehicle was located later but unoccupied on Weathersfield Ave. 
And police were already investigating a shooting that time near 47 May Avenue in the capital city. A male victim had been shot. He was taken to the hospital for treatment. And about three hours later, officers responded to a shot spotter activation along Albany Ave. Officers on patrol were told that a woman had been shot and taken by a private car to the hospital. And then just after 4 a.m. on Sigourney Street, a victim found with gunshot wounds in a car. The male victim there currently in critical condition at the hospital. Today, police continued their investigation to a stabbing that happened at the Woodstock Fair last night. State police are releasing very few details, but Eyewitness News has been told that a male victim was stabbed at least once and then transported to the hospital. An early morning shooting in New Haven has become a homicide investigation. This happened at Chamberlain Street about 5 a.m. That's where Channel 3 Eyewitness News Waterbury Bureau Chief Dennis Valera is live now. Dennis, what do we know about this victim? Police haven't released anything on the victim yet, Kevin, age, gender, but we know that the community is shaken by this. A small memorial now sits where the victim has died. Now, shots fired calls came in around 5 a.m. here on Chamberlain between Fairmont Avenue and Kendall Street. Police and the fire department responded with the fire department declaring the victim died. Loved ones of the victim came while investigators were still here, immediately setting up the memorial when the investigators left. In a statement, Mayor Justin Elliker said gun violence is ripping neighborhoods apart around the country, also saying how the city is stepping up to curb street violence. Some of that statement reads, locally we're implementing evidence-based interventions, more police walking and bicycle beats, enhanced youth programming, more street outreach reach workers and wraparound services for folks re-entering our community. Mayor Elliker went on to say the city recently announced plans to create an Office of Violence Prevention, also calling on national common sense gun laws. Now, this is the Elm City's 20th homicide this year, the last one happening nearly two weeks ago when a 14-year-old boy was shot and killed in the Fairhaven neighborhood. We're live here in New Haven, Dennis Valera, Channel 3. Eyewitness News. Thank you, Dennis. All new tonight, police in Ellington are investigating a home invasion and alleged theft of tens of thousands in cash and jewelry. As Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Christian Colon tells us, the family was tied up. Now the hunt is on for three suspects. It was about four in the morning Saturday when state police got a report about a home invasion on Wildermere Village Road in Ellington. Police say a family reported that three Hispanic males dressed in black clothing forced their way inside and tied them up. Oh, we got so scared because we are just sleeping when they ring the bell. So like we got so scared that what happened? And we just checked with the neighbor that what is going on here. Shweta Shah lives a couple of houses down from this horrific scene and says her family was woken up by police seeking her doorbell footage. Police are looking to find answers after the family says one of the three men pointed a gun at a loved one and demanded money. We consider that it's a pretty safe neighborhood, right? So we never had such incidents, right? So there are plenty of kids playing outside. Uh, this is the first time we heard that, right? So this is something that happened. We can open, keep our garage door open, front door open, like... It's okay, but now like when they tie somebody and take them at gunpoint, it's like really we have to rethink what we have to do now. The Shah say they are stepping up security and will be adding cameras in the back since there is a trail surrounding the neighborhood that is now concerning since outsiders can just walk up. As for the family who was tied up, police say they were not injured. The trauma stays with them for their entire life, but yeah, we are here for them. And if you have any information about the home invasion, call the Connecticut State Police Troop C. In Ellington, Christian Colon, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. A lot of folks take